I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 193 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you've joined me. In this episode, we're reading the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 5, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Tatuaje Skinny Monster Frank Lancero 6x38. So let's go to coronacigar.com and see what they have to say. The infamous Monster series by Pete Johnson have become some of the most sought-after cigars in recent years. These limited cigars were only released once a year to celebrate Halloween, but now they are back with their own Lancero line. The Tatuaje Skinny Monsters, the Frank Lancero Cigars, are 6x38 in size, and come with Nicaraguan fillers and binders. They are medium-bodied and come with a rich Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Don't wait to order because they will sell fast. That's a guarantee. And strength is medium. Wrapper is Connecticut broadleaf. And binders and fillers are Nicaraguan. And they come in the one Vitola, the Lancero 6x38. That is the Tatuaje Skinny Monsters, The Frank, from Tatuaje Cigars. So let's get into our reading of Acts chapter 5. I am reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1. But a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge... He kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people 
by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And Spurgeon comments on verse 20, Go and stand in the temple and tell the people all about this life. Our message, if we are true to Christ, will be not only about a doctrine, but about a life. The high priest conceived that the apostles merely preached doctrine, for he said, You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. Verse 28. But the Christian message is like Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. John, verse four, uh, John chapter 14, verse 6. And we are to tell the people all about this life. This verse and those that follow tell us what we are to tell the people about this life. The first thing to tell about this life concerns Jesus the Messiah. Verse 42 says, They continued proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Next, we must proclaim the sacrificial death of the Son of God, the atonement. The apostles boldly spoke of our Lord's death, for they said to the council, Whom you had murdered by hanging him on a tree. Verse 30. If we leave out the satisfaction made by Christ for sin, if we leave out the message of a real and effective substitution, we have left out the gospel. Another thing we are to tell about is the resurrection. This the apostles proclaimed clearly, saying, The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus. Verse 30. A further item we are to tell about this life concerns the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Verse 32. If holiness is not proclaimed as the effect of the indwelling Spirit of God, then we do not tell the people all about this life. And picking back up in verse 21, And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came, and those who were with him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported, We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came and told them, Look! The men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charged you not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And Spurgeon comments on verse 31. 
God exalted this man to his right hand as ruler and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This was part of the answer of Peter and the other apostles to the question and declaration of the high priest. Chapter 5, verse 28. Didn't we strictly order you not to teach in this name? They asserted that their preaching and teaching had been done by divine command that could not be set aside by any human authority, imperial or ecclesiastical, and that the true Prince of Israel, the Son of David alone, had the power and the right to issue commissions to those who owed allegiance to Jehovah. They declared that Jesus, whom the chief priests had crucified, was still alive and reigning in glory, enthroned at the right hand of God, and that they were only fulfilling his royal commands when they were standing in the temple and teaching the people. Chapter 5, verse 25. And picking back up in verse 32. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, Take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about four hundred, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered." So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple, and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. That's the end of this episode. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals, Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless, and the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.